In this example, we look at a problem that deals with buoyancy, and we consider a situation where an object is placed in a fluid, in this case water, and we know information about its true weight. So the object's measured to have a weight of 160 newtons. That's when it's measured in air. So if we were to put it on a scale, this would weigh 160 newtons. But when it's placed in water, it has an apparent weight of 120, 120 newtons. And this is basically due to the fact that there is this upward buoyant force that is exerted on any object when it is submerged in a fluid. So there's this lift that kind of helps the object be buoyed up because it is submerged in a fluid. Now the reason that there is an apparent weight here and we have a scale that's actually attached to say a rope or a string, so there's a scale up top here similar to a scale that you would see at a grocery store where you go to measure the weight of your bananas. And that scale has a cord that comes down and whatever the scale reads is the tension in this cord. So there's an upward lift from the scale and that is the apparent weight, the tension in this string right here. So we're asked to figure out first, what is the buoyant force that's acting on the object? So the hint is, remember that the system is in equilibrium. So when you see something like this, you have to think about Newton's second law, which says that you have to look at the sum of the forces that are acting on this object. So if we look at this picture and we wanted to sum up the forces that are acting on it, we know that any force that's acting up is positive and any force that's acting down is considered negative. So we have the apparent weight, which is basically the tension in this string that's holding the object up, plus the buoyant force, which is that upward lift because it's submerged in a fluid. And then we have the actual weight of the object in air, which is pulling it down, or the force of gravity that's pulling it down, and that downward force that we have to put in as a negative value. So since the, since the system is in equilibrium, the sum of these forces here have to equal zero. So if I go ahead and I put in the apparent weight of this object, upward lift is 120 newtons, plus the buoyant force, and then the actual weight of the object is 160 newtons, but it's negative because it acts down. So I can add the two forces together, 160 and 120, taking into account the negative, and I have that the net force is zero, it's negative 40 newtons plus the buoyant force. And so the buoyant force here has to just equal 40 newtons. So if you have a problem like this, the way to keep this in mind is that this buoyant force is the difference between the actual weight and the apparent weight. And it's based on the fact that the system has to be in equilibrium, and so these two upward forces have to equal the downward force. So let's move on to the next question. So the next question says, according to Archimedes' principle, what is the weight of the object that's displaced when the object is placed in the water? Well, Archimedes' principle says that the buoyant force is always exactly equal to the weight of the fluid that's displaced by the object. So that means that the weight of the water that's displaced is equal to the buoyant force, and we found the buoyant force in the last part of the problem to be 40 newtons. So the way to think about this is if this container was completely filled to the top with water and the object was not in there, and we had a little spout that caught all of the water that spilled out, if you put the object in the water, it would displace water, and that water would spill out into a container. And so the amount of fluid that's displaced by placing this object in the water, if we catch all of that water here and we weigh it, it would weigh 40 newtons, and that 40 newtons of water that we displace in this container would be exactly equal to the upward lift of the buoyant force. The next part of this question asks, we know the answer for part B, and we want to know, and using the fact that we know the relationship between weight, mass, and gravity, we want to know what is the mass of the water that's displaced. So suppose we caught all that water that was displaced, and we knew its weight was 40 newtons, we want to know its mass. So we have that weight is 40 newtons, and we know that weight is mass times gravity. So we can rearrange the expression, and we can solve for the mass and the mass is the weight divided by gravity, so 40 newtons of water displaced, that's how much it weighs, divided by 10 is 4 kilograms. The next part of this question says, what is the volume of the water that's displaced? And this one is a little bit more tricky, 
But imagine, again, I have this container and I put this object in and the water spilled out and I caught it in this container down here, all of the water that was displaced. So when I caught that water, it has a certain amount of weight, it has a certain amount of mass. In this case, it's four kilograms, but I also want to know the volume. How much volume of water is in that container? So I can use the fact that volume is mass divided by density. And so I know the mass of the water that was caught is four kilograms. I know the density of the water that I caught is one kilogram per liter. So I can solve for the volume of that water. And the volume is just the mass over the density. So four kilograms over one kilogram per liter, because that's the density of water. And that gives us four liters. Next, the question asked, if the object is totally submerged, as it is here, what must be the volume of the object according to your answer for part D? So basically, as I put this object in the water, water starts to spill out. I catch it over here. The more of the object that I put in the water, the more water that's going to spill out. So if you have a container filled to the top and you start putting something in there, more and more water is going to splash out. So the amount of volume that spills out in terms of the fluid has to exactly be equal to the volume of the object. So if the object is completely submerged, then it must displace a volume of water that's equal to its own volume. So basically, we know that the volume of the object is the volume of the water, which is 4 liters. Finally, the last part of this question says, well, we've got a lot of information. What is the actual density of the object? So we know that the volume of the object is 4 liters, because we just found that. The volume of the object is the same volume as the water that's displaced. We also know from the very beginning of the problem up here that the mass of the object, when I weigh it in air, is 16 kilograms. So according to the definition of density, mass over volume, I can plug in 16 kilograms for the mass, 4 liters, and I can solve for the density, which is 4 kilograms per liter. I expect this density of the object to be greater than the density of water because the object sinks. And so if it is more dense than the fluid, it will sink. And if it was less dense, it would float. And we know that it's submerged and it's sinking. So that density has to be greater than the density of the fluid or greater than one.